Welcome to our first video in the Emacs for Scala <coughs> series. Let's start by cloning ourselves a Scala project. Handy Scala project we happen to have off of GitHub. And you can clone it into just any directory that you have convenient. Okay, so we have our project clone now. Let's go into our project, have a look. We'll see that there's an included SPT script, so I can say SPT enzyme generate, like so. Now we put the command in quotes because there's two words to it. Hit return, and we wait a few moments. Now the first time around it will actually compile the project, download any dependencies that are external, and create our .enzyme file, which Enzyme for Emacs will use to associate itself with our project and be able to do all of its good stuff. Give that a few moments. Okay, we're almost done here. So we're compiling the source files for the first time. It'll generate a file even if there's compilation errors. Compiling the tests. And we have our .enzyme file. If we do a directory, there it is waiting for us. Okay, so let's fire up Emacs. Make sure we get it in front of our other window. Now I use a little utility for OS X uh, called Spectacle that allows me to resize and move windows without actually having to use the mouse by using the keyboard. So for example, I can move Emacs to the top, move Emacs to the bottom, or move Emacs to full screen, all by using the keyboard. When you start working with Emacs, you get used to doing everything with the keyboard, so it's a natural fit. Now, the first thing I want to do is fire up Dirtree, which and it prompts for a directory. I'll use the current directory, because that's where I started Emacs, or I could browse to another directory with completion and tab completion. Hit enter, and I see a nice visual representation of my directory. So now I can move around, I can open folders, I can actually open files. And I could begin editing my Scala files right now, but I haven't actually attached Enzyme to this project. It, the Scala mode and Enzyme are aware that this is a Scala file, but I haven't actually said what project file to use. That project, that Enzyme file that we generated a few moments ago. So we will say Enzyme, Enzyme, and we'll point it to the correct project file. Again, I'm just using the default. I didn't type anything there. Hit enter, and you'll see that it's connecting. Now it's connected to a back-end process, which will now do all of the compilation and, and analysis for us of our Scala application. This will allow us to browse, to see syntax errors, to look at documentation, to drill from one file to the other, do refactoring, and so forth. So it adds that power to the already impressive editing power, the raw editing power that Emacs has. Put the two together and you've got a pretty good environment for being able to do an awful lot of things with Scala files. So we'll wait a few moments while the analyzer gets ready. There we go. It's actually finished. Oops. And I started another command that I didn't really need. So I'll just kill that buffer. There we go. Now, if we were to make an error at this point, because Enzyme is active, so let's just make a typo in this file and save the file, you'll see immediately we get a compilation error being shown to us. And if I put it back, save, I immediately see the file go back to normal syntax coloring. This is an indication to us, as well as, of course, the status line down here, that Enzyme is now operational on our project. So that's really all it takes to get started with an Enzyme uh, Emacs project for your Scala applications. In our next video, we'll show navigation, how to move around uh, a Scala application, how to find classes, find objects, find methods, um, do some pretty far powerful searching and navigating, uh, both with Enzyme, with Dirtry, with uh, Sunrise Commander, and a number of other utilities that are included in Emacs for Scala. Thanks for watching.